Welcome to this week's class. This week we're going to focus on Rashi. There's many levels we can choose to accentuate what I'm trying to show. And I guess I'll go ahead and name a couple of those things. They're all going to be shown, but what what we want to walk away from, maybe that's up to you. but And maybe it's up to me to figure out in the future where I want to go with this. But number one, is, Ra- is the things that you need to think about, concern yourself with, and think about the big picture of the Torah world. How many of you have been told or led to believe or whatever your experiences in Torah Judaism, Rashi is coming to explain the pshat. You guys hear about that? First thing I'm going to tell you is, no, he doesn't. He himself comes to tell you, Lafi Pshuto. By the end of today, hopefully you'll know what Lafi Pshuto is a little bit. I'm not going to explain it now. Number two, with that said, how many people are actually understanding what Rashi is coming to do? Number three, with that said, what is the function of Rashi? Meaning, what if he is Lafib Shuto, which he is, which means he is not Pshat, which he is not, then what is the function of this Lafib Shuto Rashi commentary to the Torah? What is it actually serving to do? And finally, and this hurts me the most, Every time we do this experiment, the I guess it's a it's an argument between me and Chaim Klorfin. He wants to say that we have to accentuate the pshat. Stop thinking that it's pshat when it isn't, and get the pshat. My beef is once we filter through all the Hebrew sources and then check our work in the English art scroll, ten times out of ten art scrolls wrong. We will show that again today. Which means if you're relying on the English, you are actually getting a walking away with nothing. You think you're getting the entire Torah for free, but you're not. You're actually getting a big zero. And I mean that. Absolutely zero. With that said, let's go ahead and start. Yeah, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step what my process was. And then once we get on the, on the hitch point, we're going to stop with the process and go into the pill pole. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Step number one. If you're following along at home, you should be opening your books to Bamidbar, chapter 11, verse 17. Are you there? I'll go ahead and read the verse in English. Art scroll, for that matter. I will descend and speak with you there, and I will increase some of the spirit that is upon you and place it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, and you shall not bear alone. Is that understood? Rashi. We translated the verse. Now we're going to do what many people believe is Rashi giving you the pshat. The verse says, I descended. This is one of the... Ten places in the Torah that mentions God coming down. I spoke with you, and not with anybody else. We don't know what that means. Rashi quotes Targum Onkelis. It means mighty men. Sisei Chachamim wants to say Gedola. And we know in Kabbalah that Gedola can mean Chesed, Men that are on the level of Yosef at Tzaddik, as Yosef was called uh, on the level of that Hashem was doing chesed with Yosef. Not that he represents chesed, but we know that the sphere of, of uh, chesed, Abraham, is revealed in sphere at Yesod, which is Yosef, which makes a full part of Zeran Pin Vav Kitzavos. When the light of, of chesed comes out of Yesod, as the Graz Parish in Sifritz Neusa says, that is the Tikkun on the level of Mashiach, Mokhan the Godless, when the Chesed is in the mouth of Ima, which is Yesod. Then the Chachmat can come out, and that's what we're trying to accomplish with these great men. 
I placed upon you. Why? To what is Moshe compared in this? Uh, the time of, the, of a candle of a menorah, uh, the, or the time that a candle is placed on top of the menorah, everything is lit from him, and the light never goes out. V'nasu idcha, v'nasu idcha, and I will place it upon them. Hitna imahim alman ashikibu leim toreach b'neishem torachim v'servanim. On the condition that with y'all receive on yourselves the burden of these burdensome people and quarrelsome people. And you won't be alone. Moses complains to God, why am I alone? And this is God's response saying, no worries, you're not alone. That is what 99.9 repeating decimal people will say is the shot in our verse. Now here's some uh, some issues. Where when you, when you get into Chazal, the rabbis, the tradition, the Masora, when they see that the commentary is on the peripheral, when it says Virida and God came down, they explain it the way they do because it doesn't say Amud standing. It's coming down. Atzel is Aramaic for greatness. Now we know, this is what I like too, now we know why Tzilis is called Tzilis. It's Lushin Gadola, it's Chesed Kashur, the Keser, on the highest level, which is the wisdom of Tzilis. Basically, where does Tzilis come from? Right here. The, the level of the greatness of Moshe, of Gilo Shechina, is that not what Tzilis is? That's where the Lushin comes from. All right. We're stopping the recording at this second. Okay, take a breather. What we've accomplished now, and then we're going to pause. Uh, we've, we've stated our mission. Rashi is either Pshat or Pshuto. I don't know what Pshuto is yet. That's the next segment. We've given some light commentary, translated the Rashi, some background. Um, I guess that's not so good, but anyways. <laughs> um, any questions? Okay. Any questions on your end? No, that's uh, pretty for shot to me. That's exactly the way I would have thought it would be. Well, well buckle up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, you're, you're right. That's what, this is what everybody would say. Yeah. Take two. Welcome back, everybody. We are now going to, now our mission is going to start. We just got introduced to the mission. Now the mission starts. The mission is we are we have to know what pshuto means to Rashi. What does it mean in Torah? And why is Rashi not pshat? How do we do such a thing? We have to prove Rashi's words. We have to find Rashi's words. People say, what's bothering Rashi? I want to say, where is Rashi getting his words from? I claim that Rashi is nothing more than a copy and paste from the Masora. Would you buy that? Word for word, I think he, he wrote nothing original. He copied and pasted from Tanoim. The Tanoim is the rabbis of the Talmud, and that is a euphemism for the Masora in its first written format post Hanukkah, around the time of the Chorban, all the way to post Rome. Okay, the Tanoic material. Is the Masora written down, the oral Torah written down? The Rishonim, and in this case Rashi, has done nothing but, and I say nothing, I'm not trying to belittle it, we're just saying he is not writing, hey, my name is Rashi, and I think I'm going to write this today. He is copying and pasting literally verbatim from the sources and Masora, and if that's true, we should be able to go back in the sources of the Tanayim and find exactly what is bothering Rashi any questions until now? By you, any questions? Russell? No, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any. All right. Part three. The discourse will start that Rashi 
is going to go and draw inspiration from the Sifri. Sifri is the Midrash Halacha on the Chumash. It's the Chumash, Psukim, Tanayim, Darshaning verses. Based on a superfluous hay, based on all of these uh, superfluous, your favorite thing. Don't say Lamed, say Aleph Lamed. I saw that one yesterday. So the the, the Tanayim, they did not invent that tradition. That was Masorah. Going back to Moshe Rabbeinu. How to understand the language and vernacular of Hashem. Speaking it to Moshe and prophecy, and have the tools of understanding the Chumash, is understanding the prophecy, and I wouldn't even call it the Hebrew. It's the sensitivity of the Lushan. A little different than Hebrew. Right? If I say, hi, dear, can you please uh, hang your hat there? That's not an English thing. Right? And if you understand what I'm saying, it's not because you're a linguist and you know that uh, dear is a term of endearment. Right? It's that we have a language. So Hashem speaks in a certain way. It's the reality of truth in this world. If we are to be sensitive to the prophecy of Moshe, of how Hashem speaks, our greatness is understanding that. It's not exactly Hebrew. It's a different skill. Right? It's, it's being aware it's being aware of the ikr, the, of, the, of the root system of the Torah, seeing the matrix, the formula of it. The formula as opposed to the, the grammar, per se. So when we, when we, there's no Talmud on the verse, so the Torah Tamim is out. No Talmud. No Talmud said, oh, this Pasik is used for blah, blah, blah. So then you go through this forum, and we, go, we went to the Sifri. Midrash, Halacha, on Sefer, Bamidbar. Yeah? Now, can you follow along in your Rashi, please? You don't have to understand what I'm saying. You have to just hear if it's the same words. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're going to go to chapter 11, verse 17. Look in your Rashi. For those following at home as well. Okay? Go in Rashi. 17. Yeah? I'm going to read. You with me? Yeah. All right. So, we're calling right now this the Rasha, okay? My Sifri. This is not Rashi I'm reading. I'm reading the Sifri. You're in Rashi. My Sifri says the Divrei Amaskil is the Yeradati. Zoachas me'esu Yeridis Shaksuvis Batayra. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Did I add anything or subtract anything? Are you saying the Sifri and Rashi are word for word? My next Divrei Mosque is Viratati Imcha Velo Imahim. Does that sound familiar to you? Okay. And Vatsalti Min Haruach Lema Moshe Dome Baosa Sha Lener Shamunach Al Gebe Minoira Vedalkum Mimino Neros Arbe Velo Chasur Oro Klum Kach Lo Aisa Chokmaso Shamaisha Chasara Klum. Very similar, isn't it? Rashi got it from the Sifri, did he not? So now we have the Reisha in the middle, the Emsa, word for word, except for the second part, there's different exact nusuks of the quotation of the Midrash, but you see clearly it's the same Midrash. Now we're going to go to the Seifa. Are you ready? All right. V'naso itcha, l'amin emar lafishu laimer ika esa levadi, a little different, isn't it? So Rashi breaks shape in the Seifa, and they're similar, similar, but when the Seifa in Sifri ended it with Venasu Idcha, look at the Pasik, Nasu Idcha, and it didn't go with Bemasa Ha'am. It included the entire Hemshik of the Pusik in the Seifa on the short end of the beginning, correct? Rashi did not do that. Is that correct? Okay. So now we have now is when the game begins. Now the game begins. And before we do the game, let's go into the Onkelos real quick. 
uh, God was revealed, spoke with you, um, and you, you are to place from your greatness spirit onto the men that are with you, that are going to endure with you, and b'mato ama velo tosovar at belechodach. Asli alahon will be made on you and uh, endure with you. Let me see. One second. B'matul ama, and not, and you will not. Ah, they're gonna, they're gonna take it on with you, and you're, they're not, you're not gonna suffer alone. All right. So Uncle gives us a nice shot. God spoke to Moshe, and Moshe put his greatness onto these men. And they are now going to suffer with you, with Moshe. And Moshe, his request is fulfilled. He's not going to suffer alone. Is that correct? That's a nice pshat, isn't it? Russell, do you agree that's pshat? Yes, I agree. So I descended, I spoke with you there. Um, like my greatness from the Ruach that is on you, I placed on them. And they are with you. And they will be for the... For the, 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 the with you with the nation, and you will not lift the people alone. And then that's basically what Uncleus said. I think we're done now with Uncleus there, correct? So Uncleus gives us the pshat. Um, the Sifri gave us, like, I wouldn't call it a pshat. It was already drush. The menorah, the lights, you know, the diuk, he spoke with you and not with them. So there's already a different drush, non pshat element to the Sifri, correct? In the Rasha. And the Sefer, Rashi, and the Sifri are totally different. Um, similar to Uncle's all the time, but we see Uncle's Pshat here in the Drusha. Rashi and Sifri are in a disagreement. Is that correct? Okay. Pause. Now. It should be noted in the Midrashim. Midrash, uh, who is it? Targum Yonasin, Midrash Raba. Yakut Shimoni, Midrash Agadol, and others. This Pusik is when the Zakanim, the, the men who were conferred the, the Shechina, the Kavod of Hashem, it was such a great day. It was akin to Har Sinai. Does that imply that God is the star of this verse? Yes. You cannot have a Sinai where God is not the star. So this is a positive, upbeat. Hashem is giving another Sinai by multiplying Moshe such that Moshe doesn't even lose anything. It's a great revelation such that you can even say that the menorah hint is akin to maybe what the miracle of Hanukkah was. Do you agree with that? So the Midrash is out, correct? We have a Midrash. It's a great day in the world, correct? Russell, you concur. Yes, absolutely. All right. Hey, Amnon, please take this out of the way. And this. Okay. For the record... This is my opinion based on some words from the Brisker Rav. We're going to get to the word Vitzom that Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron commanding them on the people. That is Exodus 6.13 coincidentally enough and Exodus I think 34-32. Those two verses in Exodus have to do with Moshe and Aaron being commanded by God to lead the people. And the command is the language according to the Talmud, ordaining. They are ordained to lead the people and all that comes with that. That then tells me that the whole thing about Hashem giving Moshe's honor on to them, which is Navua, the cover of the Shekhinah, all that stuff. That is what's called Nishmat Moshe, being a Slavish and a Talmud Chacham, the Darg of Moshe betray Meshichin. 
Okay? The true smicha, the true idea that Hashem comes to us and just gives us this thing, this enlightenment. That's Hanukkah, it's Sinai, it's Navua, it's, it's Mashiach, it's the Gula. That's this Pusik. Midrash Tanhuma also says it's a Sinai event, as I said, Midrash Rabbah. Okay, now the now the games are really begin. Russell, how you doing? You there? Russell, are you there? Yeah, it just takes me a minute uh, to my thing time out to get back on the work that I needed. Yeah, how you doing? Good, it's good. I'm doing good. I'm with you so far. Yeah. So now we have the Rasha of Rashi is fine, or the Sifrin Rashi, correct? The Emsa, the middle part, is out of the var, correct? The Seifa, we see a, re- a resemblance, but it's not exact. The question becomes: In Sifri, they 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 call them tr- uh, Tarchonim, troublemakers, and Rashi calls them that as well. Where does Rashi get this word Sarbonin? Because our Sifri 1117 does not say Sarbonin. Why? Why does Rashi change it? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've just gone from Pshat to Pshuto. In the Rasha, Rashi was not looking to make any changes. We can call the Rasha even a type of Klippus Noga. That's for you, Russell. Why? Because it serves either way. It doesn't change anything. It can serve the Pshuto. It can serve the Pshat. It's so benign in the commentary and the way the verse fit. There's no Nafkameen that doesn't make any changes. Right? It just, there's nothing there. So it's, it's like, a, a, like a, a root. Nothing changes. Then Rashi brings the Seifa, and he changes. And the only change is this word Sarbonin. Now is where it starts. Once you say Sarbonin, I'm going to take you on, there's no particular way of mapping this out. So let's just get it done. The next thing I can do is go into the index and find out where in the Talmud does this is is the verse spoken of not necessarily in the context of Rashi, but at all? That takes us to Kedushin. and into Sanhedrin Talmud, where we're going to Paskin like the Rambam. Remember, we are out of shot now. Why? Because Pshat ran out of gas. I told you everything. Uncle has said, hey, it was a great day, everybody. Sinai, Kavod, Shechina, prophecy. The Midr said, hey, everybody, it's Sinai, Kavod, prophecy. Hashem's here. It was a great day. We said that, didn't we? And that's Pshat. Would you look in the verse and read, or, in, or whatever, 1117 out loud? Go ahead and read 1117 out loud. Vyaradati Vidibati Imcha Sham Vatsalti Minharuach Asha Alecha Vasanti Alehem Vanasha U Itcha Bamasahaam Velo Sisa Ata Levadecha. And read English. I will descend and speak with you there, and I will increase some of the spirit that is upon you and place it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, and you shall not bear alone. That sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Moshe Rabbeinu has support. Hashem is there talking. The, the glory of God has been passed on. It's a good thing, isn't it? Do you, do you hear this Moshe character? Would you call him Moshe Rabbeinu? Or Moshe Navienu. Is this a prophet, a prophetic smicha? 
Is he giving over the prophetic tools or the rabbinic pill pool? Is there a rabbi in that verse? There's nowhere that says rabbi in, in Dini Nafashos. Correct? You would think this is Navua. This is the glory of God. Correct? And the word sealist there makes sense, doesn't it? That's the pshat. But Rashi is not coming to give you the pshat, is he? Says Rashi himself. So when we then go into the Talmud, because that's where the verse is quoted, and we go to 17a, and the Talmud wants to know, Sanhedrin Gedola Haisa, there's something called a Sanhedrin Hagadol, and Sanhedrin Katana, correct? A big one and a little one. My time in the Rabbanit Amri of Moshe al why does Moshe Rabbeinu have to be included in every Sanhedrin? Either by aspect or number, right? What is it, like 70 plus 1 or whatever it is, right? 71 plus whatever it is. So why, why do we have to have this Moshe included? 70 men plus Moshe. Why? So the Talmud asks, because they gathered their imach, imcha, with you. Imcha es behadayu. With you and everybody all together. Rabbi Yehuda, Imcha, Mishum, Shechina. Ah! Rabbi Yehuda says, only because the Giloi Shechina. This is a great day of Sinai. Kilu. For Rabbani, our Krav, and Nasu Yidcha, and Masa Am Yidcha, and Espe Hadayahu. They're just saying, with you, like you. For Rabbi Yehuda, Yidcha, and Daimin Lecha. You gotta be just like you. Just like you. So some would say then when they congregate to you, then there is the idea of on your level, which is Navua Sanhedrin Gadol. And when they are not like you literally, but they're Jews, then it's a smaller Sanhedrin. Let's read Rashi. Rashi is saying. With you, because of the Shechina, that with you, they'll stand outside the tent of meeting. They won't come to the tent because of the Shechina. They got the Shechina, he's got the Shechina, we all got the Shechina. But it's all the Amin Aruach, he quotes our verse, Rashi quotes our verse. But then, but doimin lechami yuxin o menoikin memum. Has to be the same yichus. If it's a Jewish Sanhedrin, it has to be, then there's been, the members have to be Jewish. And we're going to ask that question in a second. I know, Russell, you want to ask that question. The Rabbanin, Nafka Lehu, but Daimin Lecha. So they want to say the Sanhedrin Katan, which is called the name of Jethro, which is a, which is a smaller, the Alpha Gedola Mekatana. There's a big Sanhedrin and a small Sanhedrin. Right? That's it for Sanhedrin. Now we go... Oh, you hear... Uh, sorry, Sanhedrin again. Sorry. And there's also page 36 in Sanhedrin. It's 36B. And it's talking about can we have a gear... On a Sanhedrin panel. I did not make this up or anticipate this. just happens to be. Here's what Rashi is going to explain. There's, there's a question about the, the, the uh, prerequisite member, number of people in the Sanhedrin. 23, the Hainu Sanhedrin, or the Sanhedrin, Xiv. And it quotes our Pasik. Minasu itcha bedoimin lecha miyuchsin kamotcha. Jews gotta be with Jews in the Sanhedrin. Shishka kavar tsar gadol bani, okay. Meshum shchina. And here is this one here. One second. Sanhedrin shichalak lo yisrael ishvot esa am de inka meshum shchina. 
All right, so there's two kinds of Sanhedrin. Again, the same drasha. Now, we're going to get into... Tosfus here says, get this, this is a chesh on ger. A ger can be on a, a ger stam. Stam ger can, is kosher ladini mamoinus. Hear that? They always say a gear can't be in a, uh, in a base tin. And it's an edron. He can. You know what, what kind of gear it is? It's a new gear. We have found a new kind of gear. A Bob married Jane. Jane was a Goya. Then she took on a seven laws. Now because convert is not it was what people think it is. And a juke really can marry a gear. Al pi ikar din. Right? It was not done today. She in the middle, after they had three kids, she decided, why do I keep seven laws when my husband keeps 613? I might as well keep 613. She's now a Jew. So you have the, the din of the ger shall emo me Yisrael. A ger whose mother is Jewish. He now is enough close by to the Jew, Karov Mechicha, that he can be on a panel of judging a Jew in light cases of Bastin. What do you think about that? Stam Ger, he's not Jewish. His mother became Jewish. His dad's Jewish. Maybe his little brother's Jewish. He's a Ger. But because the family went up, and they're allowed to technically be on a Sanhedrin, this Stam Ger can now judge Dini uh, Memoinus on a Sanhedrin. So when Moshe says that we have to be like you, this Ger is enough like Moshe, i.e. when it says Yuxin, to say Stam Jew is not the Pshat. I know that, Russell. That's pretty good. That's pretty good stuff. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold, hold that thought. Okay. Now we're in Kedushin 76b, and the last place of the Talmud. Sanhedrin, at that time, needed to be Miyuxin, which is Yichus, Jew. Meshum Shechina al Shem Nevoah Na'astu Sham. At the time in the desert, there had to be a Sanhedrin, Yichus. The Yichus wasn't just Jew. It had to be covered Shechina prophecy. And that's why it was at Silas, the Ruach. But a Sanhedrin, which is only here to judge. For example, Sanhedrin of Jethro. Father-in-law of Moshe? No. So there's a covered prophecy, Sanhedrin, Gadol. And a Sanhedrin cut in like Jethro just to do damages. Then the Gare can maybe be there, but not in the higher one. Then we say, wait a second. Remember our verse. There's two parts of the end, correct? They are with you and they will help lift the nation, correct? Rashi says, we are Garis, the beginning part, and below Garis, the end part. Ella, except we, when do we do the end part? When they are here to help you with the people, i.e. a Sanhedrin of Jethro, i.e. we don't need prophecy, we don't need Shechina, it's a lower based in. So when we bring in both parts of the end of the Pusik, like Rashi did, it's when it's a lower based in, no Gila Shechina, one part, when it's Nevoa. Rashi would say the end of our Pusik doesn't change anything for the Fib Shuto, it only adds to the Pshat. But in the Thib Shuto, you have to have the second part because it, it makes a radical difference if you just had the first part. Then, then, you see Rashi went with Thib Shuto. It's not Pshat. The Sifri only quoted the first part. Why? I told you. 
The Sifri may be talking shut. It might be talking shoot, though. It doesn't let you know. Even though it's more mashma than it's pshut, though, they're not coming to say we don't hold of the pshat. So they bring one, explaining two, but encapsulating it in one. Rashi says two. I don't even know of one. It's only two. And my two is like their one that's just like two. Right? Sifri explains the Seifa in one part, Rashi in two parts. The Peshat only needs one part. Sifri might be like the Peshat, but it sounds like the Peshuto. Rashi goes in two, which is only Peshuto. It's the Maya the Peshat. Now, now that we know that, now that we know that, we get the brisker of. The brisker rub says, this lotion, Avayit Som, Shemo 613, Shemo 3432, Moshe and Aaron were ordained, or ordained to lead the people. Avayit Som Lashiminui. That was Navua, it was covered Shechina. Then, in, look inside, uh, no, I uh, don't look inside, it's just going to confuse you, it's in my Sifri. Numbers 11, 12. Remember our problem. Our problem is, this is fine and dandy, but where does Rashi get this word Sarbonin? We saw the precedent of the Talmud, but that Talmud had nothing to do with our Pasuk. So maybe Rashi's drawing from the Talmud and putting it in our Pasuk. But that's a stretch to say Sarbonin would be that. Or is it? Because when you look at 11, 12 in the Sifri, what does the Sifri say? Open the Sifri 11, 12. And we have all of a sudden, Moshe, Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron, command the people of Israel, Amar Lehem, say to them, you should know Shisar Bonin Vitarchin on him, Almanash is Kabul Lehem, Shiyu Maklalim Eskim and Soklin Eskim Bavanim. Ah, Sifri, uh, five verses earlier, brings our verse, our word. And there's another version of Sifri that brings it as well. And there's a Midrash Rabba, seven, six, seven, I think, in Shmos Rabba, six, seven, I believe. It brings the same Midrash. They are rugzanim, they're angry, and they're, they're troublemakers and quarrelsome. What does the parish in the Midrash Rabbah say? If you claim against one, they'll call their lawyer and take you to base in. That's what it means, a quarrelsome, troublesome person. If you threaten him, he calls his lawyer. So which base in does that sound like to you? The upper wind with Shechina and the Vua, or the lower wind of Jethro, where we have no Shechina, only Chachma, where we're there to congregating around Moshe, to help get, uh, or uh, deal with the people. Which one is it? The lesser. That's Dini Mamonos, Dini Nafashos, right? The Midrash of Sanhedrin Gatan, like the Masek the Sanhedrin was talking about. So, here we have our word Sarbonin. And the, the Greece says, when Moshe and Aaron were ordained, if you read Rashi and the Sifri in the two verses in Shamos, Hashem is saying, look, you're taking my people out. But just know they're 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 a balagan. You have to savlon with them. You're gonna burden them. And they're gonna want to kill you, but you gotta deal with it. So in between two verses in Bamidbar, two verses in Shamos, there's a little cocktail here of leadership, the people, and the people are problematic to the leadership. That is that's governed by that is now the creation of the Sanhedrin system. Literally, that's Chaim's answer. The whole Sanhedrin that you hear about never happened. Not in terms of the Chumash. That was a different deal about Navua and things like that. Only in exile, when there's no more Gilar Shechina, no more prophecy, no more covenant, all you have is Sanhedrin Katana. Now they bring in the rabbinic enactment to have this new creation called a Sanhedrin. It never existed. Not in the Pshat, only in the Pshuto. Rashi is not interested in telling you about a mythical based in of only of sealers type matters. He is Mayat the Giloy Shechina. Did you hear what I just said? Rashi leaves out the Giloy Shechina, which is what the shot of the Pusik is all about. He only brings in the Vipshuto, only the exile version, 
the Sanhedrin dealing with damages and based in and little bickering and bantering. They call it the Je- the Sanhedrin of Jethro. It's a euphemism. It's a muscle for what would become and then coming back into the land in the second temple on Shekinesis Sagadol. That's why Rashi brought it into two parts. The Hamshak of the Pusik. Sifri wasn't sure. Maybe, you know, it's like, you know, maybe Meshach will come. That's the Tanayim. Rashi's already a medieval Rishon. He sees. He's in France. There's no covered Shekinah there. He only does the Fibshuto. So the Brisker then says this Lashin, Vayitzom, when they were commanded, is language of how to ordain. And then he brings our Gamora and Sanhedrin, and he says, uh, he brings the Midrash, he brings the whole deal. So apparently there's a big concept called leadership, Sanhedrin, Smicha, Rabonis, Prophecy, the Beis Amitish, the Mishkan, Har Sinai. Hear a pattern here? There's a high end and not so high end. There's the optimal end, and when we're in little Bati Dinam claiming five dollars on our friends. Why does Rashi put in Sorbonin? Because that is the ikker of the entire sugya. That's why Rashi is Lafib Shuto and Map Shot. That word does not fit the Pshat at all. Problematic people do not fit the Pshat. Problematic people fit the Pshuto. When you remove the Pshat, and replace it, the replacement theology with Pshuto, you come out with the people, they're probably quarrelsome because there's no Giloy Shechina, no prophecy, and we removed the Yetzir Hara the, through a, the removed of Odazara, and therefore prophecy was lost, and therefore one of the, the commentary says they were ordained to help them remove of Odazara. Who does that sound like? A Gair. And what does the Gair do? He's coming in on the base in now. So what was Moshe and Aaron? They were leaders of Gerim, heir of Rav. If you want to go in Torah B, the exile version. If it's the, not the exile version, it's the Pshat and it's B'nai Yisrael. How do you, therefore, if you go exile, Lefeb Shuto, you are equating B'nai Yisrael with heir of Rav. Problematic. Very problematic. Now, we're going to go to the Rambam. How does the Rambam paskin on this? When we have in the, in the Sanhedrin Sugia, the Rambam Paskins on the Sanhedrin issue. Based in Shell. One second. Ah. Uh, lost it. Here's the one with the with the, the gear and the Rambam. Um, I gotta find the Rambam. Uh, I lost my spot. I'll tell you verbatim. Rambam says this Gemara to be a dying and the based in, you have to have Chachma. That's it. There's no level of Navua, covered Shechina, any of that. So when. Remember our Sugi and Sanhedrin, they were, they were, made, they were saying it was either Kavod Shechina and Navua or just like Moshe the, 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 the rabbi. So Rambam Paskins, that on the Halacha and Sanhedrin, which is the, supposedly the Pshat and our Pusik, which is really Pshuto, therefore Rambam says our Pusik is Moshe Rabbeinu and not Moshe Navienu. But when you get in the, into the Midrash, they say that Pusik is the Pshat for the end of the Torah, Never again was there a prophet like Moshe. Make up your mind. Was it Moshe the prophet, and that was the base he was with, or Moshe the rabbi charging five dollars in nickel and diming for thievery? Was Moshe identified with the base in Sanhedrin of Jethro or with the Zakanim? The shot here does not mention Jethro. That is Pshuto. And that's the Rambam. And we mention the Grease. The Grease is telling you. That when Rashi puts in Sarbinon, trouble with problematic people, that's the you know the touch of a of a Pshuto versus Pshat scenario. Rashi is not Pshat, he would not have put that in there. But by putting that in there, Rashi pulled in the two verses from Shemos, two verses from Bemibar, 
leaving out the Midrashim of Sinai, leaving out the Kavod Shechina, leaving out the prophecy, Giloy Shechina, gone. Rashi tears apart the Sifri, brings in another Sifri, Sarbinon, and then the Brisker says, Lashin V'yitzom is an Iker term for Smicha. Smicha either means the greatness of Kavod and the prophecy, but since we are rejecting that, it must be Rabbanis. Where is the rabbi rooted from the Torah? In this Pusik. Sarbinon, Rashi brought it in with Ipshuto, and now for the greatness. What happens if you just want to read? Just want to read. Art scroll on the Pusik. Russell, you there? You there? Yeah, yeah. So now, if I didn't know any better, this is what I'm reading in the art scroll. Right, you don't have it. I'm reading the commentary on Rashi. This is Rashi in the art scroll. Ready? Our Pusik. I'm assuming I know nothing. I want to know Pshat. I'm going back to the beginning. I want to know Pshat in the Pusik, and Rashi's going to tell me Pshat in the Pusik, right? And I will descend. This is one of ten descents which are written of God in the Torah. That's correct. We said no one disputed that, correct? Okay. And I will speak with you, but not with them. No problem. No problem. Sifri said that, right? And I will place it upon them what was Moses similar to a time to a lamp placed on a candelabrum from which everybody lights their lamps, but his own light is not to finish at all. No problem. No problem. Now the complicated seifa. Sifri said it in one go. Rashi says it in two goes. Forget Sifri. Rashi. Rashi rejected the pshat, went with pshuto. He did not bring Onkelis or the Midrashim, correct? He brought pshuto, Rabbi Sanhedrin, Jethro, all that, correct? Therefore, we should see in the art school commentary exactly that. Wouldn't you think so? And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. That's... The fair Rashi, right? Stipulate with them. By the way, the one of the commentaries, Migros Kedol says, Vayitzom means the, the stipulate with the people when you take them out. So far, so good. That they assume this position with the understanding that they accept upon themselves the trouble of caring for my children, for they are troublesome ones in, and uncooperative ones. Literal translation of Rashi. Correct? And you shall not bear alone. Here you have a response to that which you said, I cannot carry this entire nation. Perfect translation of Rashi. But we said Rashi is complicated. Right? So thank God there's a footnote here. Here's a footnote. They're explaining to me the Rashi. You ready? It says, go to note four. Sifri 92. It's actually 102. Already got a misprint. Problem. See also Rashi to verse 12. Okay, that's good. Does that let me know what's going on? 11, 12. With, with gather for me on verse 16, God has already implied to Moses that the elders would share the burden of leading the nation as Rashi has noted there. Sounds good, right? Go team, go. As Rashi is noted there. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. With me? Then yeah. is not a restatement of the elders' task. Meaning we're not graduating Moshe. Moshe has to be with the elders. So far, so good. Rather, it is a continuation of God's announcement to Moses of what would take place at the tent of meeting. After he would place on Moses' spirit upon the elders... The elders would assume the burden of the people by accepting Moses' explicit condition. Really? Art scroll has conflated the, the Sanhedrin Gadola, Sanhedrin Katana. They say Rashi says both. Rashi doesn't say both. Rashi says Lafib Shuto. So they are explaining. That the greatness of the tent of meeting with Moshe's prophecy is a gear sitting on a, on a bait in Dini Mamoinus, where there's no Gila Shechina, no Navua, small based in of Jethro congregating around Moshe. Which means that when you read the art scroll, you will read it and you will not understand it. Why? 
because it's very hard to understand Rashi. Because Rashi is complicated. We showed that. He brings it Lafib Shuto. And our school says, hey, you're probably going to ha- have a hard time with this. Because it doesn't make sense. The Pasik's talking up here, and Rashi's bringing it down here. So we'll tell you, bring the lower to the upper. Oh, that's not what Rashi intended. Nowhere does it say Rashi did that. That is conflating Pshuto with Pshat. Rashi didn't bring Pshat. Rashi never brought Pshat. So if you read those words in the Rashi, you will furthermore not understand Rashi again. Our school not only didn't translate it right, they put you ten steps further from even understanding Rashi. By trying to make it go Pshat. Stop Pshat. So Rashi didn't give you Pshat. The Chazal didn't give you Pshat that Rashi is quoting from. Did we succeed in finding Rashi's sources? If our school is concerned with giving us the Pshat, why didn't they bring in the Midrashim explain the Pshat? There was a day like Sinai. It was a day of Navua, a day of Giloi Shechina. They're trying to say that a rabbi, like me, can be with Moshe in the tent of meeting. Do I state my case? The end.